Crypto wars. For decades, governments around the world have been locked in a conflict with technology companies and privacy advocates over one crucial issue, encryption. This battle, often referred to as the crypto wars or the encryption wars, centers on whether governments should have access to encrypted communication through backdoors or access points or other means. And if so, whether it's even technically feasible without weakening security. So in this show, we'll talk through the history of the crypto wars, highlighting the key moments and case studies to provide context for understanding the debate. So by the end, you should have a better understanding, be better equipped to form your own opinion on whether government mandated access points or backdoors can exist without introducing serious security vulnerabilities. Hi there, I'm Nathan from Station X. We're a community of cybersecurity experts and learners offering training, mentorship, and resources to help you build your cyber skills and advance your career. So the early crypto wars, 1990s, let's talk about the Clipper chip, which is 1993 to 1996. One of the first major clashes in the crypto wars occurred in the early 1990s with the introduction of the clipper chip this hardware encryption device developed by the u.s government was designed to secure telecommunications but with a critical catch it included a built-in back door the back door took the form of a key escrow system meaning the encryption keys were split and stored by two government agencies. In theory, the government could only access the keys with proper legal authorization, such as a court order. The idea was to balance strong encryption with a mechanism for law enforcement to access communications when needed. However, this proposal faced massive public opposition. Privacy advocates and technologists argued that introducing any backdoor into an encryption system fundamentally weakened it. If the backdoor was ever discovered by hackers or foreign governments, it could be exploited to gain unauthorized access to secure communications. Additionally, there were concerns about government overreach and potential abuse of the system. Ultimately, the clipper chip failed. It was abandoned by the mid-1990s due to widespread opposition and the discovery of security vulnerabilities in the system. The clipper chip incident remains a defining moment in the early crypto wars, setting a precedent that encryption backdoors were seen as a major security risk, but absolutely is something that security organizations are interested in having. So, encryption and export controls, 1990s. So during the same period, the US government treated encryption technology as a munition, imposing strict export controls on strong encryption algorithms. This meant that software companies were restricted in how strong their encryption could be for products sold outside the United States. Early web browsers, and email programs had weakened encryption, leaving them vulnerable to attacks. This phase of the encryption wars or crypto wars highlighted the tension between national security concerns where governments wanted control over the widespread or the spread of strong encryption and the global demand for secure communications. By the late 90s, these export controls were gradually relaxed under pressure from the tech industry and international users. The spread of the internet and growing concern about online security made it clear that strong encryption was essential for both business and individuals. The post 9-11 era, mass surveillance and the next big battle. So the rise of mass surveillance is 2001 to 2013. The terrorist attacks on September the 11th, 2001 
ushered a new phase of the crypto wars. Governments, particularly in the United States and the UK, significantly expanded their surveillance powers. The US Patriot Act passed in the US shortly after 9-11 granted law enforcement broader authority to monitor communications in the name of national security. However, it wasn't until Edward Snowden's revelations in 2013 that the full extent of mass surveillance came to light. Snowden, a former NSA contractor, leaked classified documents that revealed the NSA's extensive surveillance programs, including the collection of encrypted communications and metadata on a massive scale. The documents showed that intelligence agencies were seeking ways to bypass encryption or gather encrypted data for later decryption. And this revelation fueled public mistrust in government or government's ability to handle access to encrypted communications responsibly. The Snowden leaks added urgency to the crypto wars as privacy advocates became more vocal in their opposition to government backdoors. The Apple versus FBI case 2016, a landmark moment in the crypto wars came in 2016 with the legal battle between Apple and the FBI. After the San Bernardino terrorist attack, the FBI saw access to the iPhone of one of the shooters. The phone was encrypted and the FBI asked Apple to create a special version of its iOS operating system, dubbed uh, GovTOS, G-O-V-T-O-S, to disable certain security features, allowing them to brute force the passcode. Apple refused, stating that creating such a tool would effectively be creating a backdoor into its devices. The company argued that once such a tool exists, it could be exploited by malicious actors and weaken the security of millions of iPhones around the world. Apple CEO Tim Cook described it as setting a dangerous precedent. The FBI took Apple to court, but before a final ruling could be reached, the case was dropped by the FBI because they found a third-party company to unlock the iPhone. Although the legal battle ended, the case sparked a global debate over encryption, privacy, and security. The Apple versus FBI case made it clear that any attempt to mandate backdoors would face strong resistance from tech companies, which had become increasingly focused on providing users with end-to-end -end encryption. The global stage, UK, Australia, beyond. Governments outside the US have also tried to gain access to encrypted communications. In 2016, the UK passed the Investigatory Powers Act, also known as the Snoopers Charter, which granted authorities the power to compel tech companies to provide access to encrypted data. I personally visited the House of Parliament to discuss the bill with the Liberal Democrat MPs who were actively opposing it at the time. Similarly, Australia's Assistance and Access Act of 2018 requires companies to give law enforcement access to encrypted communications upon request. These laws have been heavily criticized for weakening encryption and threatening user privacy, but they represent the global nature of the crypto wars. Many governments are grappling with the same question. How can they balance national security needs with the need for strong encryption to protect privacy, security, and even the economy? The current state of the crypto wars. Crypto wars, they continue today with governments around the world pushing for access to encrypted communications, while tech companies and privacy advocates argue that any backdoor weakens the entire system. Going dark is a term used by law enforcement or agencies to describe the difficulty of investigating crimes in a world of encrypted communication, which remains a key concern for governments. At the same time, 
there is increasing pressure from tech companies and civil society to ensure that encryption remains robust and free from government mandated access points. As more of our lives move online, the importance of encryption for personal privacy, for security, business security, and even national defense continues to grow as we continue to rely on technology. So what are the conclusions? Can access points or backdoors ever be secure? So as history has shown, attempts to introduce access points or backdoors into encryption systems, whether through the clipper chip or key escrow systems or demands for software vulnerabilities have faced widespread opposition and technical challenges experts argue that any backdoor no matter how well guarded creates a vulnerability that could be exploited by hackers foreign adversaries insiders cyber criminals etc so can backdoors be implemented without weakening encryption the answer remains a resounding no from most encryption experts while there are technical proposals such as multi-party authentication or split key encryption these solutions still introduce risks and complexities that may not fully protect against misuse or exploitation as we move forward the debate will likely continue with both sides making strong arguments for security and privacy the decision ultimately rests on how we weigh the trade-offs between national security and personal privacy and in fact weakening security also weaks personal security too and whether the risks of backdoors are worth the potential benefits what do you think